I'm holding a Nintendo Switch related giveaway right now which includes a Nintendo Switch shoulder bag, Switch sticker, pen, water bottle, cup and a Splatoon amiibo. To enter this just make sure you subscribe to the channel and go retweet a tweet that's linked in the description. Thanks. people I'm Gheb and hello reddit so I went to a Nintendo switch event yesterday and I posted a post on the switch subreddit asking you guys to ask me some questions and I'll be answering as many as I can in this video so we're gonna get started straight away if you want to see my full review of the switch or my hands-on review make sure you go check that out it should be a little eye up here and you know I touch on a lot of things on all the games and everything anyway we're gonna get right into this the first question I have here is can you check if the triggers are analog or digital it would be impossible to tell but your input would be great so the triggers on the switch are digital both on the pro controller and on this you know joy cons I took some pictures of the actual pro controllers you should be able to see that there it would be it would have been nice to have them analog but it does make sense to have them on the go and to have them digital otherwise I'm pretty sure they would break very easily I understand their decision but yeah they're digital I'd like to know the weight and the feel of the joy cons on the console. Also, there were images shown that there were no, was no battery presented shown in the home screen UI. Would it be possible to take a look at the settings if there's an option for that? The ones showing that with battery percentage on f are from the versions for devel developers use. In any case, enjoy the event. I'd like to start off with saying that we sadly didn't even get to like touch on the menus at all. At certain points, I even tried clicking like the home button, but it wouldn't take me anywhere. So I sadly can't say anything about battery percentage. Every switch was also hooked up to like a charging kit. I'm pretty sure they were they had these like big metal things on them so we couldn't steal them. The weight was really good though. Again, like I said, we had these big metal things on them. So they were definitely heavier than the, what they're going to be like when you hold them. Uh, it, it definitely didn't feel heavy. I'm pretty sure people are just going to be able to, you know, take it with them and it's not going to be a strain because the, the thing is light. So it's absolutely not a concern for me. I know this is small, but could you look to see if there's a dedicated place to run a strap on the tablet part itself? Sadly, I, I was really hoping that there would be something like this. I really like this question and uh, sadly I couldn't see anything like that. I'm pretty sure it's been confirmed that there is no such thing, which really does suck. But yeah, I, I couldn't see it. For Breath of the Wild, could you open up the settings menu and find out what the different options under HUD are and what, they have, what effect they have? In fact, if you manage to get footage for this for your channel, I imagine you'd get quite a lot of views and circulation since everyone's curious and desperate for Breath of the Wild settings menu. But most of the footage out now is the same plateau gameplay. Well, I still have the plateau gameplay, but I I actually managed to do this. I know there's a picture of the settings menu here, so if you're curious about that, I'm gonna have that on the screen right now. But basically what most people were wondering about is this thing saying like normal that you could switch around. I managed to switch it, and the other version is called like a pro mode, pretty much. Not sure if there's gonna be more modes in the in the full game. What the pro mode does, and hopefully I should have footage of this here, is remove the minimap, the temperature meter, and the little sound thing in the bottom right. So those completely disappear. I'm not sure if there's anything else, but I mean, you can analyze my footage as much as you want and you'll see what actually disappears. I'm not exactly sure what it is since, you know, I haven't fully analyzed it myself. Sadly though, I didn't get to play with this long because a Nintendo rep sort of came up to me and he was like, oh, you turned it off. So, you know, they're gonna have to turn it back on. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to see like all the features for the game. But I got to try it out and I got the footage for you. So I hope, I hope this pleases you guys because I was super happy that I managed to do this. So one of the biggest questions in this Reddit Q&A was Joy-Con grip versus Pro Controller. Hands down, Pro Controller wins every time for me. Not to say that the grip didn't feel good it's just that like the joy cons like the sticks on them for example they're very very tight compared to the pro controller in the sense like let's if i'm if i get my ps4 controller here you see that there's like a lot of headroom you know to make precise movements you can sort of like you know go back and forth like this and there's there's a, just a lot of space between the center and you know one of the edges of the control stick or whatever you want to call it. It's not really like this on the Joy-Cons themselves. Since they're going to be portable, you know, they can't be huge. It's just they were much tighter and more condensed than regular controllers. The grip feels good in your hands. I could definitely see myself playing games like that. It's just it's not as comfortable as say the PS4 controller or the Xbox One controller. However, the Pro Controller pretty much just fixes all of these issues. Buttons feel better. The, the joysticks have much more headroom and it, it just feels great in your hands. And it's definitely going to be my 
my go-to way of playing Switch games at home. Could you take a picture comparing it to a cell phone? I'm interested in exactly how big it is. So thanks to my dad, we managed to get a picture here with Adopt System next to my iPhone 6S. Probably not the best picture on the market, but you know, it's bigger than like your average phone or my average phone or whatever. Definitely not too bad though. I wouldn't worry about the size though. I don't think you can really take it in your pocket. This is with the Joy-Cons though. And we did sadly didn't get to like unhook the Joy-Cons. So I can't say like how big it is without the Joy-Cons. Try to get a feel for the screen. I'm curious if it'll feel fragile or sturdy. This one sort of links in with the next question as well, which is since many of us are getting slash seriously considering screen protectors, your assessment of the screen robustness and would a screen protector impact on the docking? I know it's not likely since they're being marketed officially. So just feeling the screen and touching it, it, do it doesn't feel fragile. Absolutely not fragile. However, I interviewed a Nintendo rep on the spot. So I'm going to be, he's going to be answering a few questions. Also touching on screen protectors. So make sure to watch this. Hey guys, this is Jihab here. I'm here with Patrick from Nintendo. Do you know if the Switch will support Bluetooth, like Bluetooth headphones and stuff like that? For example, if I have like, would I be able to use a pair of Bluetooth headphones with the Nintendo Switch, like the console itself, for audio from the game? I don't know that. Uh, that wasn't in their F FAQ, so uh, they haven't answered that question. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And then the final question is the screen of the console. Uh, is it like, would you recommend getting, for example, like a screen protector or something for it? Or is it like, is it sturdy? I would recommend the screen uh, protection. Will it still be able to dock with a screen protection? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. At least if you buy an official one. Okay, so you have official ones. Yeah, I think we're going to have uh, more licensed, at least. Okay, okay. Well, th thank you very much. That's all the questions okay. that I have. Are the buttons clicky, example, 3DS, new 3DS, or not, for example, Wii U controllers? So with the Joy-Cons, which are going to be, I guess, your main controllers, especially on the go, uh, they are clicky, like in 3DS. I don't know if you can hear that. It's sort of like that. On the Pro Controller, however, they are mushy or, you know, they're not clicky. Uh, like the Wii U controllers. Pro controller uh, buttons are not clicky, but uh, the actual Joy-Con buttons are clicky. During all these events, I haven't seen anyone play a game with both both Joy-Cons, but without a grip. I'm curious if that feels nice and comfortable. Also, what happens if you point the right Joy-Con at the screen when the system menu is displayed? What are the odds that a pointer would show up? I think there's more to that sensor than they've let on. So sadly, I I, I was sure I was going to be able to try the, the controls like this, but I sadly wasn't. I mean, except for arms, where we did have to have the straps on, I didn't get to you know, hold them just one by one. So I really, I really can't give my opinion on that. I would imagine it feeling good since, like I said, I played it with arms. And again, sadly, we had no access to the system menu, so I couldn't try that one out. I did read the question. I wanted to try it out, but I couldn't, sadly. Stability of the dock, easily tipped. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't say so. No, it, it didn't feel easily tipped. Impressions on the HD rumble and which Joy-Con left or right is better playing Nest style since the joystick is placed differently on each one. Thank you. So the impressions of the HD rumble are much better than I originally anticipated. Like the thing works in my opinion. Opinion. One of the one two switch games on the at the event had like a thing where you sort of you know You were supposed to check how many balls were inside like the controller Basically you could shake it you could tilt it and whatever and it felt it's much better than any rumble I've ever had before and even if this isn't used to its extent where it's like, you know You're supposed to guess how many things are in the controller in every game It's still gonna feel better than what you get with a ps4 or xbox one controller It's it's hard to describe but it works, you know most of the time in the one two switch game I was able to actually get some sort of guess for the ball things. It was in the ballpark, you know. Yeah, good impressions on that. On the NES side thing, I only get, got to try that with like the, the right controller. I only got to hold like a Joy-Con controller while playing 1-2 Switch. So I sort of just flipped it around to try it out. And while it works great, I could definitely see myself like playing, you know, some games like that with a friend. The control stick on the right one at least definitely felt like it was very closely placed to the buttons in the sense that your thumbs are very easily going to hit each other and stuff like that. I'm not sure how big of a problem this is going to be because I didn't get to play a game like this. But overall, I'd say my impressions are good. You're not gonna play every game like this. You know, it's only like with a friend or if you're, I guess maybe to try and emulate emulate the NES style while playing uh, like a virtual console game. It's gonna, I'm sure it's gonna work, sort of. It's not gonna be as comfortable as an actual NES controller though. Can you check if you can use a touchscreen for menus in Zelda? I checked this and sadly, at least in the build we played, you can't do that. I checked it for Splatoon as well and it didn't work. Can you see if the D-pad on the Pro 
controller feels good and responsive, I want to be assured that the D-pad doesn't feel mushy. In my opinion, the D-pad was great on the Pro Controller. Not as good as the Wii Pro Controller, but then again, you know, the Pro Controller was being used by a lot of people at the event, so it could have easily been, you know, like a lot of people could have been pressing on it and it could have been, you know, easily worn out just from that event because there were like at least like a hundred plus people there. But what I did try felt really good and I'm definitely going to be using it. Take a note of Breath of the Wild's frame rate and whether or not there are serious drops. Try to do so both docked and undocked. Also take note of how the graphics look in person while playing. Is there a lot of fog? How far is the draw distance? Etc. I'm going to try to keep as much footage up here as possible so you can see what I'm saying. But about the drops, I experienced quite a few drops actually. Undocked, I only experienced like one big drop and it, was, it only lasted for about half a second so it wasn't really that big. But uh, undocked, I got a few drops drops actually. Sometimes it was just sort of looking closely at the grass or just looking into the distance. It sort of just dropped to like 15 frames per second. Though it is very important to note that apparently, uh, you know, watching the treehouse footage, it definitely doesn't look like it's dropping a lot. And we played a version that was, you know, an earlier build of what they played in the treehouse. So we don't have the final version of the game. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that these sort of frame drops are going to be ironed out for the, uh, for the release. So I wouldn't worry about the drops. But again, you know, to answer your question, I did get drops. And for the graphics, I'm gonna say that I was a little bit disappointed. Again, I did say before that their TVs wasn't the best and I, I'm, de I'm sure this can definitely contribute to how I felt about the game. Up close, everything looks great. Uh, the grass looks amazing with like small little flowers. Link looks really cool, but pretty much all the textures are very blurry. All the shadows are very low re resolution or low resolution compared to modern titles. These weren't that big of an issue. My biggest problem was draw distance for sure. Sort of looking into the distance, Everything was pretty much flat and I really didn't like that. Again, you know, they could fix this for future releases. I'm not sure exactly how it looks, you know, when they're going to release it since it's not out yet. But I'm going to say that graphics wise, I was a little bit disappointed. I want to know your opinion. So when to switch, how would you price it? Also look out for any HD rumble in the games. Uh, I did play one of the games that had like, you know, balls inside the controllers and that felt really good. I got to play three games. I got to play, like I said, the ball game, a milking game, which was very awkward. <laughs> I also got to play like the, uh, you know, the cowboy game where you sort of draw the, the controllers and shoot each other. While it's fun, uh, we only got to play three games. There are going to be more in the full release. I would not say this is worth 50 bucks, at least from what I played. I had my dad with me who, I mean, he's played games. He's played games in the past. He's not really a modern gamer in the sense he plays modern games. I asked him about one to switch and literally the first thing he said, $50 is definitely too high a price range and it should have been bundled with the switch. So there you have it. I personally completely agree with him. So here's someone asking about the temperature of the system. You know, gaming with sweaty hands isn't very pleasant. So do not that we had this like metal plate with this like long like wire attached to the switch so we couldn't steal it. The system actually didn't get too hot and it's not going to make your hands uh, sweaty unless you're playing like an intense game and you get sweaty from that. Uh, however, the heat from the system is not going to make them sweaty. Absolutely not a concern. And you know, even listening to the exhaust, uh, exhaust fan or whatever, I couldn't even hear it. The little like hot air that came out of it didn't like it wasn't too hot at all. So absolutely not a concern for me. Is the placement of the right stick on the uh, right Joy-Con uncomfortable? I, I didn't feel like it was. I, I actually had this concern myself and no, it wasn't. So do you like the D-pad uh, on the Switch? Like on the on the Joy-Cons? No, I could not see myself playing a 2D game with that. On the Pro Controller, yes, I could. Uh, I could play a 2D game with that, no problem. How did it feel in your hands? Was it comfortable, slightly slippery, etc.? Holding, you know, the thing itself felt comfortable. It's sort of like the 3DS. Uh, holding it like this except that it is more comfortable since it's sort of rounded on the edges You know where the triggers are and there's actual triggers. It feels more comfortable than 3DS I can't say how it how it would feel for like an extended duration of play since I haven't you know I didn't get to play it for like four or five hours of use, but it was comfortable What I played was definitely comfortable All right So I tried to answer as many questions as I possibly could if I didn't answer your question It was most likely because either I answered it in another question or I did not get to try this feature out Or you know just because I didn't get a good enough feel to actually answer the question but yeah hopefully i answered enough questions here thank you so much all for answer for asking so many questions it was a lot of fun uh, you know inspecting the switch and everything and the event itself was great and my overall impressions with nintendo and the switch are really good if you want to know more about that you know check out the hands-on review thing i did with the switch but that's gonna have to be it for this video thank you so much for watching have an awesome day and i'll see you dudes in the next video peace